Hey everybody, it's Roxy, Lion, Eli, and Bunny Moana Kyler. And we are so excited to be with you on this Sunday. And it is going to be a very exciting one that we all just had to dress up for. So today we are having in-person church. So we hope that you are able to come to in-person outdoor parking lot church. If you do, you will get a um, customized um, coloring page for you to work on during our service. It's all about the different layers of the forest that we've been working on. So our root layers, our herbaceous, our shrubs, our understory, our canopy, and then what we focus on today is the vertical climbers, the vines of the forest. Um, and that is such an interesting layer to remember exists because they don't have big tree trunks like our trees do. They don't have structure um, or architecture on the base of it. They instead use other trees or things to climb up it so that they can reach the canopy of the forest and get light for the leaves to make photosynthesis. So they have leaves just the same, but they use their um, tendrils to grab out and to reach. So if you ever see some peas, we'll do some, some vertical climber ID later on in the video, but peas send out these what's called tendrils and it's like arms that like wrap around different things so that it can hold on. Um, sometimes you might see ivy and it has these little hairs that hold on. Um, and what's so fascinating is that God created this layer of a forest and they're so resilient and they each come up with different ways to change what, they're, what they do in order to get photosynthesis. So like I said, some might creep on the ground, some might go up the trees, some might have certain leaf shapes lower down so that they can get um, as much sunlight as possible. And then once it reaches up high up at the canopy, then their leaf shape actually changes, which is just so fascinating that they are something that can evolve and change and be re so resilient um, to be able to get the food that it needs to through photosynthesis. So we're excited to um, look more at different vines and um, climbing, vertical climbing um, um, examples in our forest that we'll show you. And then as part of our book, they don't have any pages just on the vertical climbers. So instead we're gonna focus on what leaves do through photosynthesis, and then we're gonna focus on the bark since that's what the, climb, the climbers will climb up. We're gonna look at different types of bark and do some bark rubbings. Um, we will still have our forest Sunday school at four o'clock where we'll read this lesson um, and do some crayon rubbings on bark and then some ID of vertical climbers. So we hope to see you to, on Sunday for our outdoor church service and, or you could choose to go to either one if you wanted or both um, at four o'clock in Brownwood Park for our Forest Sunday School. We'll see y'all later. I invite you to go on a nature walk and see what kind of vines you can spot in your neighborhood. On the screen, you see the English ivy climbing up these trees to reach the treetop canopy. However, at the base of it, people in the neighborhood have cut the ivy to try to prevent this from happening so that they don't overtake the trees. We want the trees to be able to continue to photosynthesize and not be taken over by the ivy. You can see the pile of ivy laying at the bottom. Some vines climb with hair-like like structures that allow it to creep up the bark of a tree. You can see the residue of that happening there. This is poison ivy, leaves of three. They are branching out and reaching out. You can see that the shape of the ivy leaves allows it to catch as much sunlight as possible. Now we're in the garden of my house and you can see a mixture of blackberry, of grapes, and of peas that are climbing this trellis. Each one acts in a different way. This P is swirling up the trellis. This is our grapevine, and you can see the long, skinny tendrils that are reaching out in hopes of grabbing onto the trellis. 
little tiny grapes back there. Again, the vines are reaching for the light, so they're growing upward as best as they can. Now we're in the backyard with the kiwi hardy vine. So this is little fruit kiwi that will hopefully happen pretty soon. But you can see the same is true for this vine where it's swirling up and twirling around the trellis in hopes of getting more sunlight. Here's another pea and you can see a good example of the tendrils that are reaching and grasping onto it. What can you find in your neighborhood? Now's our time to read The Magic and Mystery of Trees, written by Jen Green. If you have this book, you're welcome to go get it and read along. If not, I'll share the pages up on the screen as well. How Trees Live. You've never seen a tree eat a bowl of noodles or peanut butter sandwich. So what do they eat? As long as it has sunlight, water, and a gas called carbon dioxide, a tree can live, grow, and even make its own food. We're gonna read about the trees, but the same thing has to do with vines and how they eat. The amazing food-making process of plants, all plants, is called photosynthesis. Meal time. A tree's green leaves soak up light from the sun. Then they use energy from the light to mix carbon dioxide and water. This makes a sugary liquid called sap, which is the tree's food. Making oxygen. While they are busy making sap, the tree's leaves give off a gas called oxygen. All animals, including us, breathe in oxygen and breathe out carbon dioxide. If there were no plants such as trees, we wouldn't have air to breathe. Summer days. Broad leaf trees only make food in spring and summer because there is more sunlight. They lose their leaves in the fall. Conifers can have leaves or needles. They keep making food throughout the year. Page 18 and 19, leaves. Next time you are outdoors, take a close look at a leaf. Leaves are very special because it's in the leaves that the tree works its magic by making its own food. Water pumpers. Veins are like tiny pipelines running through the leaf. They take in water from the tubes in the trunk sapwood and carry food made by the leaves to the rest of the tree. Light catchers, broad leaf trees, spread their wide flat leaves to capture as much sunlight as possible. Each leaf is like a miniature solar panel soaking up the energy from the sun. Leaf shapes, each tree has leaves with a slightly different shape. They can be long and thin or wide and round. Flat, round leaves are good at catching sunlight, but also lose more water. Trees can't move from place to place, but they can very slowly turn their leaves to face the sun. Leaves are green because they contain a natural pigment called chlorophyll. In fall, the green fades and other colors in the leaves can be seen. They turn yellow, orange, and brown. Page 16 and 17, trunk and bark. A tree's trunk supports its branches, just like your skeleton holds up your body. The trunk has to be very sturdy to support the huge weight of all the branches, oftentimes having to hold up vines as well. A tree simply couldn't and wouldn't be a tree without a trunk. Inside the trunk, at the center of the trunk is the heartwood. This grew when the tree was young. It is surrounded by sapwood, which contains tiny tubes that carry water from the roots to the leaves. Between the sapwood and the outer bark is a very thin layer called the phloem. This carries sugar from the leaves to the rest of the tree. Tree rings provide clues about the tree's history. Wide rings show years when the tree grew quickly. Narrow rings show when the tree grew only a little because conditions were too cold or too dry. The number of rings on a tree trunk is the number of years that that tree is old. Try going out and finding a tree trunk and counting how many rings that tree has. 
bark. Like this peeling birch bark is the outer layer of the trunk. It stops the tree from drying out and protects it from insects and fungi. Young trees have smooth bark. As trees get older, their bark cracks, peels, and becomes more wrinkly, like the bark of this scaly tree, and like people. Different types of trees have different types of bark. Bark is also home to lichens, like this blotchy yellow ones here. We can also tell the difference between different trees based on what the bark looks like. It's part of what we call plant ID or identification. Try making bark prints by rubbing crayons onto a piece of paper placed on bark. The texture will come through. Let's go try that now. For this creative response, you'll need several different colors of crayons with the paper taken off. You'll do the crayon rubbings by using the side of the crayon, not the tip of the crayons. We also like to go on nature walks with our identification books. That way we can label what kind of tree each one is. For the younger kids, they can just stick to doing crayon rubbings, but maybe for the older kids, invite them to draw the leaves, the flowers, the blossoms, the bark, maybe even look up the botanical names. Have fun exploring God's great creation.